So guys, welcome to the vlog. Today we're here on the Newton Arts Road here in East Belfast and we're gonna go and get one of Northern Ireland's most famous foods, which is an Ulster fry. Yes, folks, if you haven't tried an Ulster fry before, it's got sausages, bacon, tomatoes, mushrooms, sausages, sometimes a square sausage, and potato bread and soda bread. So we're gonna try one of those there in the Newton Cafe across the road here, folks. So come with us as we enjoy a Ulster delicacy, an Ulster fry. Let's go and try it out, folks. Go on in. How's it going? Yeah. We're here to get an Ulster fry. Seven fifty. Is that the one? If you eat it, you get it. You get it free. Yeah. Oh, the galah. Yes. So that's your Ulster fry. Oh, your your sort of basic ones, and then you go bigger on these ones, okay? Right. And then the galah challenge. It's it's massive. Is it? Yeah. I seen that on the the black party was here, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Right, folks, we're just going to have our Ulster fry here. We're chickened out of the, the massive one because um, I'm not that hungry. But maybe another time, folks, if you want me to come back and do the, the Goliath challenge, like the video, please, and comment down below, and I might come and do it. But chickened out for today. I'm just going to have the Ulster fry, folks. It is unique to Northern Ireland. Here we've got soda bread potato bread, which, as far as I'm aware, is unique to Northern Ireland. You can get um, potato bread. Scotland but it's called Taddy Scones, soda bread, I've never seen anywhere else so that's the main difference between an Ulster fry and an Irish breakfast or an English breakfast or Scottish breakfast. We have our own, we do our own thing up here in Ulster folks. So anyway let's have a look. Yes and Ali's, she's a, uh, one of them ones. Didn't want to get food, but now she wants some of mine, so go on ahead. <laughs> she wants the sausage. No, I want to the Ulster sausage. Bread. Because we already tried this one before. So. Potato bread, yes. Ali has had potato bread because I did smuggle some over to Mexico the last time. Mm -hmm. So um, I bought a, I bought a few bags of the stuff. <laughs> potato bread, that is. Anyway, mm. what do you think? So good. Nice. Normally to have it with something, have it with a bit of egg or you know, it's not only how it have by itself, but you like it by yourself. Well guys, probably I'm just gonna eat many oyster fries for the future. Yes. But actually it makes sense because I'm just recently landing. How does it compare to chilaquiles? <laughs> it's it's pretty good but People know it's like the Mexican breakfast, so there's yeah. a competition, not just with Ulster Fry, with anything. Yeah, Honestly. I must say I do agree with that, the story de Cuarto, but you can't be the good old Ulster Fry if you're hungover, folks. So, anyway, I better get chopped in here. We're going to, to talk and eat at the same time. Let's get stuck in here, folks. First thing I do when I'm back in the country is get myself an Ulster fry, folks. Always. Mmm. Thumbs up. Get it down your esophagus. So, folks, we're going to take a wee explore down the Newton Arts Road here, aka the heart of the British Empire. Or so, look, so we like to think so ourselves. Um, this is a working class neighbourhood of East Belfast. Famously known for where the Titanic was built. These streets would have housed the men that built the Titanic back all those years ago, folks. And now it's having a bit of a resurgence. And we've got the Portview Trade Centre over here where there is banana block. There's sort of um, different events on in there. But a lot of these shops would have closed maybe in the 1980s, 1990s because of Conswater Shopping Centre. And that's just been even more magnified now with the effect of the coronavirus and people shopping online. So there are a lot of shop, empty shop units. But at the same time, still some little businesses still thriving. A lot of discount retailers here. Um, the Dandelion Shop of Unexpected Things. So we might get a wee look inside some of those there. But the main thing we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at the murals. The wall murals, old and new. 
so we do have some paramilitary style murals with gunmen and that sort of thing but there's also new more modern more peaceful which will come with us folks enjoy the new Arch road there's some other discount shops let's, let's, see, let's see what they've got for sale there folks nice uh king charles bag the king we've got some Union Jack bunting for sale so yeah decorate your house with your with your with your king folks still a few wee shops about you know um, there used to be a lot more bars here by the way folks a long time ago there was this road was full of bars but a lot of them closed down so still a few remaining great eastern up in front of me here so we'll, might check out might check it out for a pint later on for about what do you reckon is it beer o'clock yet ali not yet no now it's coffee time it's coffee o'clock yes the great eastern might pop in and have a wee See, there's Titanic murals over here. East Belfast UVF on parade. There's a, there's a nice one up there, look at that. <laughs> All right, hey there. There's a... Uh, one of the old style sort of paramilitary murals, East Belfast UVF. We seek nothing but the elementary right implanted in every man, the right if you're attacked to defend yourself. And then over there there's kind of a more Titanic based mural. So let's let's take a wee walk down the road here, let's have a wee explore. Young citizens volunteers. So there's one for the YCV. Newton Arts Road, Castaway, Sydenham, Scotland. Newton Arts, Woodstock, Bally Bean, England and Bangor. I wonder where the England branch is. So folks, although we are on the Loyalist Newton Arts Road, there is actually a hub of Irish language activity right here in front of us. And we're about to walk past the Belfast City Mission, or the, sorry, the East Belfast Mission, which does actually have Irish language classes. So if you want to learn a bit of couple of Foucault, you can pop in here and see Linda Irvine, who's one of the teachers teaching the, the Irish language folks. So maybe one day I'll give it a go. But yeah, just in here, East Belfast Mission. It's run by the Methodist Church. They also do kind of fundraising activities for homeless people and they do they restore old furniture, that sort of thing. So it's kind of a charity, but in here they would have Irish language lessons. So this is one of the wee old kind of streets of Belfast. Landrick Street, McMaster Street next door. So these would be older, um, like the, the houses used to be many years ago. A lot of these streets would have been knocked down and cleared um, to make way for more modern housing, but they kept some of them. So you can see traditional Belfast street, we've got some carnation posters up there, carnation flags so you definitely know what side of town you're in here folks what do you think so far? it's good, good yeah, oh come on, sorry so we're just almost at Templemore Avenue um, which is home to quite a famous mural called Freedom Corner which we're going to have a look at in a minute and um, there used to be um, quite a few bars here in this little bit here it used to be the Avenue 1 just on the corner but it's long gone folks just been left to rot just been demolished uh, it's a green so we did have a bit of a re-imaging recently they did put new murals but we're going to have a look across the road here at the Freedom Corner it's just over there let's have a look around folks It is one of the things that Belfast is famous for is political wall murals. So we are going to try and have a look across the political divide. We're not just going to look at the loyalist side, we're going to have a look at the 
Republican side as well later on, folks. Yeah, come on. So we'll we'll check out some of the murals. It's definitely something that is unique to this part of the world. So let's have a wee look. These murals are being replaced with historical loyalists, black and white, and it's just similar to this. So that's, that's down in Bangor, that's in um, Kilpilly Estate, pretty sure. Which we'll, we'll actually, we'll be going to Bangor later on folks, so that there, we will be able to see that, um, that mural. So we're just down here at the bottom of the Newton Road at the Pitt Park, we're just having a wee look at some of the memorial gardens. So there's a bit of a memorial garden here to Jimmy McCurry, Robert Neal. So this was to do with the Battle of St. Matthews, which is the Catholic Church just behind me here. And there was a gun battle with the provisional IRA, in which two people, two men were murdered from this area. So, yeah, just across the road, this is what's known as one of Belfast's flashpoints, or it's, um, what would you say, peace lines. So we're just, we're right on the edge of the, this is still the Loyalist territory, but if we go across the road, that takes us into the Nationalist Short Strand. So there would be some battles here in the past that that memorial is to. Um, nowadays it's pretty quiet, but as you can see, there's a bit of street furniture here just to keep the two sides apart. If you do look closely, you will notice that the, the houses do have grills on the windows and across the doors. So that's a bit of a, you can see, can you see that? You've got the grills upstairs. So that's basically to protect um, from rocks getting thrown at the windows, that sort of thing. But it's normally pretty quiet these days. That house doesn't, but that house does have it, you see, look. You've got the protective grills on the windows. So yeah, we'll, we'll take another wee walk down here. And there's, a, there's another mural just at the end of the street, I think. A Titanic mural. That's pretty much the end of our little tour for today. We'll take a walk back up the road. But things are much quieter than what they used to be sure around this area and there's an example of a more um, peaceful mural it's not about paramilitary it's not about gunmen and stuff it's more um, ballerinas um, you know it's, it's a bit more um, a bit more inclusive maybe what do you think folks should we keep the old paramilitary style murals? Is that part of our history? Does that mean, does that make what Belfast what it is? Or should we start doing ones like this here with doves and people dancing ballerinas? You're never too old to set another goal, to dream a new dream. What do you think folks? Or a bit of both? Should we keep some of the old ones and get some of the new ones? So it's a bit of a mix, do you know what I mean? Because it, it is what makes Northern Ireland unique. We do have these political wall murals. And it is a tourist attraction, people do come here to see it. So why would you get rid of it if it's something that connects us with our recent history? But please say in the comments below if you think we should get rid of the Paramount murals and or should we keep them? It's up to you. That's a short strand across the road, folks. That would be the, the kind of nationalist area just behind those walls. So anyway, here is more of a peaceful kind of mural about the Titanic which of course was built in Belfast in 1912. So these these sort of murals are more reconciliatory. Almost said that right folks. And here's one about peace. So it looks like a peaceful um, handshake with two people shaking hands. No more no more bombing, no more murder, no more killing of our sons, no more standing at the graveside, having to bury our loved ones. No more waiting up every hour, hoping our children they come home. No more maimed or wounded people who've suffered all alone. No more minutes to leave a building, no more fear, park cars. No more looking over our shoulders, no more killing in our bars. No more hatred from our children, 
no more no more so a bit of poetry there folks a bit of reconciliatory um, blue presumably to represent the Protestant community and green for the Catholics because like I say we are right on a flashpoint here which would have suffered a lot of tension in the past you know I can remember I don't know 2002 around about that time there was a lot of activity but nowadays it's kind of a bit more quieter which is good to see folks we can finally live together with our neighbours uh, I think that's the end of we could go back this way I don't think there's any more up that way right folks we're just at Freedom Corner here which is down at the bottom of the Newton Arch Road which is quite a famous landmark of Loyalist murals so these have been re-imaged recently to black and white murals and this is of the old Ulster Defence Association which was the paramilitary organisation set up in the 1970s to kind of protect Loyalist areas so it's 50th anniversary 1973 from when it was set up and there are some of the other organisations there was the UDA the Loyalist Prison Association Ulster Freedom Fighters also young militants. During the conflict, our women played an important role supporting our prisoners while also keeping the family together. So here's one of the, the women of the UDA. Ali, do you want to get your photograph for the, the mural? She's got her sunglasses on, so you can fit right in. Um, Loyalist Prison Association, so that's kind of... They're, presumably they're making sandwiches or something for the, for the UDA guys. And this one, the loyalist, the Ulster conflict is about nationality. We sh this will shall maintain. So as you can see, there's the uh, four constituent parts of the United Kingdom, Wales, England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and the national flag, which is the Union Jack. And there's another one of the UDA man. She look, you fit right in, you, you fit in well with your sunglasses. You fit in well with your sunglasses. <laughs> You look like one of the guys on the on the picture. Are you <laughs> oh, no. There we go. So anyway, that's just another UDA mural with a one of the guys with a dog. And Loyalist East Belfast, Freedom Corner. So I think yeah, we'll start heading up the road again, folks. Just to show you a bit more of the Newton Arch Road. Obviously we did have a good old Ulster Fry earlier. So we've been well taken care of in that regard, but we can go and have some pints later on. Maybe another day, folks, pull into the Great Eastern or the, the Welders Club or something for a wee pint of Guinness. Um, maybe not today, folks, but the things to do. But we will certainly show you around this part of the city, which I'm very familiar with. My family do come from this part of town, and, you know, I have a connection with the area for sure. But definitely, you know, a bit of sadness because it was the beating heart of Belfast, of the British Empire, of, you know, the shipbuilding industry. The biggest shipyard in the world was right here in Belfast. All the supporting industries to support that, so the linen mills, making the linen, making the ropes, um, the Sirocco works, making their fan units. So everything to, to connect with the shipbuilding was all here in Belfast. So a big connection sadly no longer here and um, the shipyard is still there but it doesn't employ anywhere near the amount of people that it used to it used to employ about 30,000 people now it's closer to 200 and um, correct me if I'm wrong folks but not a big employer so a lot of industry is gone from the area but I think it's an area on the up and you do see a lot of new faces a lot of people coming from other countries to come and live here so definitely area is changing but I think changing for the good other countries, look, we've even got one beside us here. <laughs> All the way from Mexico to come over to see East Belfast, well, folks. we are debating between just... Yes. We, there's a possibility to look here. That's it. So we're, we're debating where should we live? Should we live in Mexico or should we live in Belfast? What do you think, folks? Let us know in the comments below <laughs> if you think we should move to this lovely part of the world, which is where my heritage is from. It's where my family is from. So this is a bit of who I am, there's the Belvoir Bar, the Beaver, the Belvoir, sorry, um, no longer open, but that's the sort of place that you had to stand and sing the National Anthem at the end of the night. 
Uh, I was in there a few times many years ago, but it's no longer open. There's another So this is to do with the 36th Ulster Division, um, which of course they fought in the Battle of the Somme, the First World War. First to go over the top, 1st of July 1916. So yeah, you can go and visit. This is the Ulster Tower, um, which is in people in France, modelled after the Helms Tower, which is in Bangor County Down. Clannyboy Estate is where the Ulster Volunteer Force, the 36th Ulster Division, that's where they trained, one of the training sites. So you can go and see that, not that tower, but the one that it's modelled after, which is in Bangor, which is down the road from here, so we're going to go there during this visit at some point. So that is obviously, that's France, that's the Fiefel, that's the War Memorial, and in between Belgium and France. So more memorials here. So we got some um, memorials to the different soldiers that were killed in action. And that's actually the streets they came from, so Belvoir Street, which would be I think it's Belvoir Street, yeah. Pretty close to here anyway, Solway Street. So yeah, more memorials. So yeah, onwards, next part of the tour, fish and chips. It's just hard food, but there's a good fish and chip shop, Bethany. Maybe try it another day, folks. That'll be right gorder of us to have an Ulster fry followed by fish and chips. So here's more memorials here. Let's have a wee look. So this is more, the dead cannot cry for justice, it's the duty of the living to do so for them. So this is to do with the uh, IRA murders. This is all the different bombs that would have went off, so Shankill, Fish Shop Bomb, Enniskillen, they attacked the Poppy Day Parade, that was a gun attack, Bloody Friday, this was one of the, set off about 10 different bombs across Belfast, killing 9 people, Darkly, Coleraine, these are all at Tiban, Kings Mill, they shot a busload of Protestant workers and 10 were killed in that one. Le Mans, they firebombed a meeting of the Collie Club, so the people were out basically for a dog club and they put a firebomb in and they incinerated people. So these are all the things that the IRA have done. Um, it's kind of been brushed over, but more to do with Claudie, Le Mans, that was the firebomb when they incinerated those people. So yeah. A lot of terrible things happen in this country, um, you know, so we shouldn't forget that, folks. Um, of course, Sinn Féin are the political wing of the IRA, so they kind of are one and the same thing, in a lot of people's opinion. So, yeah, anyway, let's not dwell too much on that, though. that's a little bit of the recent history of the area. On the Westburn, of course, Gentleman's Supporters Club. Another place to go in and get a good, good Guinness or a pint of green, as they call it, a pint of Cogsburg. It's a good old, good old Guinness. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed our tour of the Newton Arts Road so far, folks. We will come back and explore some of the imbibing establishments. Um, and in, in, in plain English, that's a pub, folks. In case you're wondering what that is. <laughs> Pops your pop into the Great Eastern. <laughs>